So today we are finally doing it. We're doing a water cooling on the bit axe. So this right here is the gamma that we currently have. Today we are not actually going to be doing it on the gamma. This is just kind of for the thumbnail purposes because I already had it off the rig. We're going to be doing it for the Supra as kind of a proof of concept and then we'll move it over to the gamma if it works basically. So you're looking at a bunch of things and we have a bunch of things here that are going to be kind of useful for us actually putting on the water block and stuff like this. I just want to mention that you can get all of these. They'll be linked in the description. So this right here is technically the pump to pump the water around. This tubing is Corsair, I believe. This is just a heat block, but it has copper on the bottom. And then that's the tubes through there. And then we have these kind of screws to screw into right here and the other end by there. So those will all be linked in the description if you want to go get them. I also have an alternative to this that is linked in the description because I believe that this exact one is not able to be bought anymore. It's out of stock, but there is one that is plastic on the bottom instead of metal here. So this black part right here is actually plastic, but it's the same sort of architecture. So I'll leave links to both of them if they come into stock, whichever one, I believe they're both going to be okay because it's mainly focused on the copper on the bottom. And it was kind of like the main thing is you could have had one with aluminium, but I didn't really want one with aluminium. I wanted one with copper just because it's better for that heat dissipation with liquid cooling. And it does kind of look too big right now, but I have like solutions for this. So this comes only with these kind of spring screws that you see here. So these are going to be useful because it kind of acts like the same thing on the regular bit axe when you get it standard, those heat sinks that are springed in. We've actually got this springed in, so it's going to pull the perfect amount of pressure onto the board. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to get the Supra off the rig, and then we're going to actually attach this and kind of see a fitting for it firstly. And then we're going to have to take it off and put the tubing on. This might be a two-part series because I've already bought most of these but we need a radiator which i'm kind of thinking of a solution in my head right now we could use an old radiator and then we need to find a solution to this power supply that we have on basically the pump where the water goes in there it spins it and it comes out here but as you can see it's molex this is for fan control or technically temperature control as you can see there so that can be plugged into the bit axe but this is going to pose another problem i guess with in terms of power but i have a solution that we could use and it involves a gpu riser but we'll go through all of that the first thing that we need to do is actually get the supra off the rig and then we should take off the heat sink and then we'll add this new heat sink onto it so you can see here we have the bit axe max so we've taken off the max actually and we're going to be doing it with the max instead of the gamma and i know that it doesn't have the holes there but we're just gonna sink it in and i'm thinking right here we might have to take off that little heat sink but that's kind of what we're going for right there so we're gonna have to work around some of it but we can take off i believe a little bit of kind of everything and we can kind of adjust this as well to take off some of the side bits because we only need kind of up until there to spring down into it and hopefully it won't move from there. So we're going to kind of work around, see what we can do, see where we can put it and then we'll go from there. So already after sizing that up, I've realized that this is not going to work with this heat sink. At least I've seen pictures of people using these, but I think they're slightly modified. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do it on the gamma and we're going to have to cut basically these edges off here and make it square so we're gonna have to square it off to there and then basically turn this into a square so going across and then across i don't think it should be too much of a hassle to do that and it also won't really move the pins because they're all going to be set in place regardless i think that's the best option there and then we have to work around kind of the fan pins we might have to actually take this off so that's might be another thing that we're going to do 
and it should line up, but if not, we are going to have to get a different heatsink and do it all over again. But it looks like we can do it with this one. We just need to make some adjustments to it. And then we'll come back when we've done that. So we've made some adjustments to that now and it should be perfect to fit. So we've squared it off basically to this point and we can leave these here because I don't think they're going to get in the way. And we're going to have it placed like this maybe that kind of direction so that it's flowing outwards or we could do it the other direction it really just depends on where we want to mount it but let's take off the heatsink and then let's actually get this attached so we've taken off the heatsink there and we have also taken off this heatsink that was placed there so you can see here we have two options we have either we place it through here and we get rid of this side or we can place it the other direction, for example, this direction, and we don't have to remove anything, I don't think, if we do it that way. So we're actually going to put some thermal paste on, we're going to decide which side we want to go with, and then we'll show you it fully attached, and then we can get on to actually doing the tubing on it as well. So after quite a while, and um, doing some kind of R&D on the uh, fittings or placings we have actually come up with this idea so we've taken this black thing off because it was sitting kind of at this level between the copper and the acrylic so we've taken it off and we've actually angled it so it's going to go and place like this the reason for that is because of the fan pins we don't want to desolder them off because the actual pump has fan control on it so it can actually control the temperature through the pins and that's what we really wanted because otherwise we don't really know how to cool it or necessarily how much rpm the pump should flow through so we kind of needed the fan pins to be open there so we have this right here and you can see that we've actually shaved off this part of the acrylic just down to that screw so we can actually get around the fan pins at that angle right there now, there was a mounting solution where we would put this underneath because originally it was underneath. But now I'm thinking that we actually put it across the top and we just hold it through the three that we have there. So one down there and then one down there and then one down there. Obviously, this one through this pin is not going to hold it in place, but we don't really have much solutions for that currently at the moment. But I think three should be enough to hold it in place. If not, there is an option to drill right where the hole is. And it lines up perfectly because it's obviously 40 millimeters on this line. So you can actually drill a hole right there on the corner and it will fit another screw through. So that might be an option as well. I know there's a lot of kind of mistakes that we've made along the way already that we can kind of remedy. But this is not really a solution that's kind of plug and play anymore. It's more of a mess around and find out if you can do it. So you can see here, this is our pump that we're using. And we have the fan control there. And our way of powering it is through this Molex connector. I believe that this is Molex. So this is just power. And I think it's 12 volts. So we can actually plug this in to a GPU riser that we're currently powering on our computer. And then that will actually power this. And we can also plug the fan control in, hopefully have it all mounted on the rig that we made quite a while ago. So I'm just gonna put this on right now and then we're gonna see if that fits. And then we'll move on to kind of the tubing solution. And this will maybe have to be a two part video just because we got to do a lot of R&D on it and I'd rather get the video out and you guys comment kind of solutions before we start doing a little bit more on it. But so far, that's what we're working with. And we also need to find a solution to prime this as well. I've never done any kind of water cooling myself. So the priming part on this, I've already kind of tested it, but I still don't know how to prime it fully. It might be an easy solution, so let me know in the comments. But let's get this fitted on here and let's see how it looks on the bit axe. So this is our solution as of now. 
And one of the problems is that there's a little bit of gap between the bottom, if you can see that, it's kind of lifted up there, but fully flushed at the back. So we might actually have to drill a hole and put the spring screws in, but we can clean up this metal plate as well, shave off this part. But you can see how it's holding it in place if we just lift that up. That's mainly what we're going for. And you can still fit the fans into there. It's going to be a very tight fit, but I think that that's going to be our solution for the moment. And then we just have to work on the actual tubing down to the pump and then down to the radiator. So it looks good so far. There will be other iterations of this because I have different heat sinks come in that are water cooled, but they actually come out the top, which is way better. So you can just mount it and the water will flow out the top instead of to the side. So you can get around the fans and stuff like that. You won't have to do any editing. But that's going to be a while before that comes because it's coming from China. So this is going to be our solution. We're going to test mainly this kind of model first. And then the revised video will be with the heat sink that has cooling coming out of these kind of ports there. As I said, everything is kind of linked in the description, but I personally wouldn't buy this one yet. I will link another one in the description that I have bought that will be way easier to set up. I think we're still going to use this pump because we have the Molex and the fan control on it. So that's always good because we only want it for one bit axe currently. So I think the next step would be to kind of set up the cooling and we have a bit of a jerry rig radiator that we're going to be using as well, which is from a CPU cooler. So let's get onto that right now. So this is the setup that we're working with, if you can see it here. So we have our out tube, which is this one, which will go through the radiator that we see there. I still need to find a solution to actually mount these properly and stop water flow through them because we've already done a test and they're not watertight. So maybe there's some adapters because we just cut this off a radiator and maybe we'll just have to put some kind of like metal zip ties onto that. And then it comes out and back into. So this is going to be back into here. That's the inflow. And then the water is going to pump through there, back down this tube that we're seeing here, all the way back around into the block. That is currently what we have for the setup. There's obviously a lot of things that we need to work through, kind of like getting these watertight. We already have these watertight with these adapters or whatever that you can screw in. And then a screw goes on top of that, just like that, that you have there. So you put the wire, so you put the hose through there and then you screw on to tighten it to make it leak proof or waterproof. But we still don't know how to prime the system. So maybe this is kind of where the video stops and we'll kind of have an updated video in a couple of days when we figured out kind of what we want to do. Also leave it in the comments because we don't really know what we're doing here. And then we actually have to find out a power solution for this as well and make sure that everything kind of fits and doesn't fall over. So there will be a fan on this as well at the end. So a big fan there to cool it and then it comes back down to here and cools into there based on the temperature of the chip with this four pin power control, but it only has fan control right there. So as I said, let me know in the comments. There is links in the description if you wanna go get these, but I personally wouldn't recommend this one yet. As I said, I've left a different one in the description if you wanna go and get that one that I've currently ordered, but it does take a long time to get here. So currently we're just using this one at the moment. So make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.